So let us now begin our wondrous journey with the cardiovascular system. Clearly one of the most important body systems that is running 24 seven in order to keep you alive and functioning well. Now, to break it down slightly, when we're looking at our circulatory system, it is a massive transport network. So this circulatory system is what is responsible for delivering nutrients and oxygen and removing waste from all around your body in all your different tissues. We can divide the circulatory system down into two major uh, circuits. The first one is the pulmonary circuit. Now the pulmonary circuit is on the right hand side of the heart and this just describes the blood flow of deoxygenated blood moving into the heart and then moving out to the lungs to get oxygenated. Once that blood moves then into the left side of the heart, it is then entering the systemic circuit. So systemic means sort of body wide. So we're gonna be talking about that in much further detail, but before we get too excited, before we get too ahead of ourselves, let's talk about the heart itself. So the heart is located between the second rib and the fifth intercostal space in your chest here, okay? In this mediastinum, so just behind your sternum here, uh, leaning slightly to the left-hand side of your chest, sort of in between your, your lungs. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit more when we hit um, the, the respiratory system. Now, what is also important is that the heart is obviously an incredibly important muscle. If that stops, if your heart stops working, you're gonna have a bad day to say the least. So we're gonna make sure that our heart is nice and protected. And we do this by um, looking at the pericardium. So the pericardium is essentially a double wall sac that encloses and surrounds the heart. Now, a good way to sort of think about this or in, in, envisage it in your mind's eye is imagine you've got like a gigantic water balloon and you take your fist and you kind of pu like punch your fist into the water balloon. What's gonna happen is that the water balloon is gonna sort of go double walled and will um, surround and sort of encompass your, your fist. Now we have three main layers of the pericardium. The first layer. So if we look here, we can see we've got the, the heart and the sort of, we can see the major internal structures here, but we can also see out here is our pericardium. The first and our outermost layer here is this fibrous layer. Okay, this is a sort of a very tough outermost layer that it helps to anchor and support and hold the heart in place. <laughs> you know, we don't, don't just want our heart to sort of fall out, okay? Then next layer then, if we zoom in, we can see down here, we have our um, the serous pericardial layer. And what this is, this is the double walled layer here. Imagine this is the, the water balloon. This is the rubber of the water balloon. So what this does is it connects the, the heart uh, or the, the pericardium to the epicardium, which again, I'm gonna talk about more in a, in a moment, but you'll notice there's this sort of empty sort of cavity space in the center here. Now, what is very important with this um, sort of cavity here is that it contains this serous fluid. Now, what this fluid does is that it essentially acts as a lubricant because your heart is constantly beating and it's constantly moving. The last thing that we want is for your heart to be sort of rubbing and grinding against other tissue and, and being damaged. So what this does, it helps lubricate the heart so that it's able to beat and not be damaged. And then what we have here, this innermost part here is the other layer of that serous uh, pericardium. And this is also referred to as the epicardium. If we look at the heart itself, okay, there are three main layers of the heart. We have the epicardium, myocardium, and endocardium. Now those prefixes, the word in front of it, that epi, myo, or endo, give you a lot of information. So epi simply means like over or, or, or above. So the epicardium is this innermost layer of our pericardium. It's kind of where the, the pericardium and the heart sort of conjoin together as one. The next part here is the myocardium. Now myo means muscle. So this is the thickest part of the heart and this is what is doing all the heavy lifting here, okay? This is what is causing the contraction and relaxation and uh, facilitates our heart working as a pump. And the last part here is the endocardium. So endo means sort of innermost layer. Now, what is very unique with the endocardium is the type of epithelial tissue that it uses. And it, we need it to be really nice and smooth to ensure our blood flow is moving there without any troubles. 
Now again, all of these wonderful structures, this is a very good summary slide. I really don't want you guys to start studying with a slide like this. It can be incredibly overwhelming and there is just stuff everywhere. And if you're feeling overwhelmed over an image like this or an image such as these ones here, that is 100% okay and 100% normal. Because what we have essentially done, what these images are doing, is it's taking like over two weeks of content and slamming it into one awesome summary image. So, should you start studying these images? Absolutely not. Should you come back and look at these images at the end of sort of week one and week two? Absolutely yes. So now that I've frightened and overwhelmed you slightly by looking at these massive complicated photos of the heart, let's now take a step back and really start to simplify and look at these main key structures. Now looking at these external structures is all well and good, but I feel it is much more important that we spend some time looking at these key internal structures. So when we are looking at the heart, it's important that we note that there are four main chambers, and I'm going to be referring to these a lot. We have our atria and our ventricle. Now, our atria are up the top here, and our ventricles are down at the bottom. So we have our right atria and our left atria, and then down the bottom here, we have our right and left ventricle. What's important here is that we are looking at this from an anterior point of view. So that is the right side. If we were to flip that 180 degrees, then we would see it is on the right hand side. So that's important to keep that in mind when we are looking at these structures is looking at our perspective. At what way are we viewing these structures? We have our right and left atria and our right and left ventricle. Now, what is also important to note is that between the right and the left atria, we have an interatrial septum. So inter basically means in between, atrial means atria, and septum means like a wall or a barrier, okay? So like the part of your nose here, that is a nasal septum. Now with our right and left ventricle, again, we've got the right and left ventricle with our interventricular septum. And this is, again, it's a wall to separate those two chambers. Within these chambers, we also have valves. Now, as I've mentioned before, when we were looking at the pulmonary circuit and that systemic circuit, these circuits are very much a one way road, okay? We do not want blood to go backwards. That's very, very bad. So what our heart does is it has these wonderful valves. And what these valves do is when the heart is contracting, Okay, depending on what phase our heart is in, these valves will either open and allow blood to move through or they will snap closed to stop blood from moving backwards. There's a good little um, sort of mnemonic here that you can use to help you rem uh, remember these things. Always remember, try before you buy. What does that mean exactly? Well, if we are starting off on the right atria and then right ventricle, we pass through the tricuspid valve. Whereas from the left atria to the left ventricle, we pass through the bicuspid, or also known as the mitral valve. So in terms of the order that blood flows through the heart, which we're going to talk about in a moment, always remember, try before you buy. It will move through the tricuspid valve before it hits that bicuspid valve or mitral valve.